All right, I think we're going to get started. It is just one minute after the hour. So welcome everyone to the latest Curvy Sewing Chat. I've been off for a couple of weeks, but I'm back. Um, and today we are going to be talking all about swimsuits um, because it is Cashmeret Swimsuit Week this week. Um, and what it means is that we're basically doing um, deals and discounts and various things every day um, and then having this, uh, this webinar too. So sewing swimsuits, I really feel like it's one of those things, right? A bit like sewing bras or sewing jeans where initially you're like, don't think I can do that. Like that seems like something else, like something beyond normal sewing, right? I can sew a t-shirt, but how could I sew a swimming costume? But actually, you know, like all those other things I just mentioned, it's actually not as difficult as you might imagine. Um, and there are like different difficulty levels of sewing a swimsuit. Um, and we're going to talk about that from like the most basic to like, what if you want to do the bells and whistles? Um, but it's another one of these things where if you're curvy and especially if you have big boobs, it's amazing. Because here's the bottom line. I do not leave the house without a bra on, right? In fact, I'm rarely in my house without a bra on either. And it's not for modesty reasons. I don't know about you guys. It's just like comfort, right? Like I'm not comfortable if I don't have a bra on actually. Um, I understand our smaller bosomed friends, maybe they feel free and easy, but personally I don't. And what that means is if I'm in a swimsuit, I want the same. I don't suddenly want no support at all. Especially, you know, if I'm like out in public, or beach bar or something like that. I used to live in Athens and I used to go to beach clubs every weekend. Those were the days when I was young and childless. Um, but I definitely, you know, I wanted to keep the ladies in place and feel comfortable. So um, sewing, if you learn how to put internal bras into swimsuits can just really radically change how you feel about wearing a swimsuit. Um, and it certainly did for me. So for me, I'm like, it's very hard to get me in a ready to wear swimsuit again with some like puny little bit of lining when I could actually have a full underwire bra. So what I'm gonna do today is kind of take you through some of the big concepts of um, learning to sew a swimsuit. Um, I'm gonna show you um, an excerpt from our Swimsuit Making for Curves video class. And we actually have a deal, a discount on that right now, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, and also answer any questions that you have. Um, so really the idea is sort of demystify making swimsuits. So this webinar will work in the same way as usual. I'm gonna mostly talk and show you some slides. Um, and if you have questions, you can ask in the chat down here. And what will happen is that Carrie, who I can see up there, I don't know if everyone else can, um, will get the questions together and occasionally we will pause and have a look and, and get to them. Um, in addition, we will be emailing out to everyone who registered, whether or not you attended live or not, um, the slides and links. And also these videos all go on YouTube. Um, so it takes us a day or two because the files are enormous. Um, but what that means is that you um, don't have to be able to attend live. So if you want to go to a, you know, watch a future one and you actually can't make this time, then doesn't matter. Um, and to answer the question that just came up, yes, this is our new time uh, for various reasons. This is now the time I can do when I don't have my child with me. So um, yeah, so let's get cracking on. So we are all about swimsuits today. So let me start this. So I wanted to start by showing you, yeah, what the current discounts are. So right now we have 20% off the Swimsuit Making for Curves online workshop with the code SWIM20. So you go to cashmeret.com forward slash workshops and you'll go there. Um, and that ends um, Friday night EST, which is Eastern Standard Time in America. So Boston, New York time. And then we also um, have been uh, restocked up or rather re- you can now buy again, after a while of not being able to buy things, um, swim things from us. So we have a couple of kits left, very few actually, I think we're down to two or three, but whole swimsuit kits that you can buy. But what we also decided to do, because we had sort of like mismatched numbers, right, where we had more of this and less of this, we're actually selling them now like um, in pieces. So you can buy various bits of lycra, uh, mesh, all the different notions, we're gonna go into that in a minute, um, directly from us. Um, and we also have 15% off that until midnight tonight EST. And you don't need a code for that. So you just go onto cashmeret.com and it's all there. 
So one of the trickier things if you're making a swimsuit with an internal bra is just getting all the piece, bits and pieces. Um, some of it is exactly the same as making a bra, but some of it is different. So we've basically done the work for you and got it all together. And in many things, we either have like a beige option or a black option. So it works depending on what you want in terms of like your um, fabric type that you're using, your skin color, like hopefully that should cover a lot of bases. So with that said, let's get into it. So I wanted to start by talking about the anatomy of a swimsuit, right? Like how do swimsuits go together? So as I mentioned before, they can go from simple to really complex. So if you start with like really simple, like what are we talking about at the most basic level? We're talking about a negative ease spandex garment. Right. So I'm right now, this is ready to wear. This is not mine. Um, I'm just wearing like a, we call this a, a tank top in the UK, but I think, what do you call it in America? No. Well, we call it a vest as well. That's where Americans get confused. This is not a vest in America. It's a vest in England. Um, but a swimsuit is effectively just this, right? Made out of swimsuit fabric. The thing that's noticeable about it is it's much smaller than your body. Much. So when you look at a finished garment measurements for a swimsuit, you might be like, holy something that is not going to fit me but it will because the way that swimsuits work is they expand to your body now you do have to watch out there and i'm going to talk about this a bit more in a minute but if you buy swimsuit fabric that's printed with like you know flowers or something it's going to be stretching so you need to check two things one do little white lines appear if it's stretched too much and that sometimes happens with like digitally printed um, substrates, especially if it's a dark pattern on a white piece of lycra. When it pulls, sometimes you see the white line. So you want to check that. And the second is, does it distort really dramatically? So that's a really big one, especially if you have big boobs, right? The swimsuit is stretching at different levels, depending on your body shape. And so if you have something that's very regular, let's just say it had like vertical lines, you're going to find it's going to do this. Maybe that's fine. But depending on the type of pattern it is and how comfortable you feel, it's something you should kind of think about. So in some ways, like slightly more abstract or things which are um, like organic looking, you don't have that problem. If you use something very geometric, sometimes you do. Now, you might not care. That's cool. I'm all about that. Do whatever you feel like, but just be aware. So at its most basic, all a swimsuit is is a negative ease spandex garment right usually lined um not always but it's a good idea to line them because a lot of fabric is a little bit see-through when it gets wet so that's the main reason that you want to line them so that's at it most basic however there's all kinds of additional things you can do which make them better so one huge one right is internal bra or support so you can go all the way from nothing and if you're cool with that that's amazing great but then you can also do different levels of support. So one option is um, the foam bra cups, but nothing else, right? They're like floating. You may see them like two little half oranges floating. So you can do that. Um, I'd say the support level is pretty minimal, um, but what it does do is like, if you care, it sort of like covers your nipples, right? And sort of it smooths everything out a little bit. Another option is the shelf bra, which I'm going to show you in a second. But basically what that is, is just some mesh and elastic around the bottom. So it's a bit like a basic sports bra or a sleep bra. So that gives you like a small amount of support. What's hard if you have big boobs and you buy a ready to wear one with a shelf bra is the shelf bra is almost always here, right? It's like, dude, like, I don't want a shelf bra on my nipples. That's not going to work. And so you end up having to kind of hike them up or it's not a good look, right? You can make your own shelf bra and it'll fit you, but ready to wear ones are a bit difficult. Or you go the whole Monty and you put a full underwired bra in. And that is what is in our Ipswich swimsuit. So my friend Laura, who's the model here, looking very gorgeous, is I think she's like an F cup or a G cup. And as you can see, her boobs look fabulous because she has a full underwired swim, swim bra in there. Um, I'll give you a secret. I've never quite managed to this point to get a really excellently fitting bra pattern for myself, like a regular bra pattern. I'm still working on that. But this swim bra is great. And what's good about it is because it's inside, you don't see the visible cups, right? So you're not seeing seams of a bra. It needs to fit well enough, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you're feeling a bit intimidated or you've tried to make bras before and they've never been exactly right, 
don't worry, this doesn't have to be exactly right. A swim bra that fits you like eh, 80% is fabulous. You're not gonna see it from the outside, it's gonna keep your boobs in place. So it's a really nice way to sort of experiment with trying a bra type um, construction, but you don't have to worry about things being like precisely right. Like if the center gore isn't precisely against your skin, it doesn't matter so much. Other things that you can do um, to make these swimsuits even better, you can add boning. Now that seems crazy, right? You think like, this is a stretchy thing. Why would I want boning? So the boning, and it's optional on the switch, you can do it. It's just here. It's equivalent to where your bra band is, right? It's just this section here. And you would only use plastic boning. This is not something where you would use like, you know, the spiral bound wet, like metal one. That would be a bit over the top. But what it does is it keeps the boobs in. Now, I am a very bad advert for this right now, guys, because I'm wearing a nursing bra, which means my boobs are going very east and west right now. So this is the absolute opposite of boning you're showing right now. Were I to be wearing something with boning, it would be, it would be holding me there a bit more. So if you really want to feel like supported, like really supported in your swimsuit, adding that little bit of boning is great. And we're actually selling fabric covered boning in our, um, in our shop right now, if you want to buy it. And then the other big one, big one is strap construction. So when I tried to make swimsuits from other brands, they're offered just spandex and that is not enough. My boobs weigh a lot, right? Like many, many, many pounds. And you just try and put like them on like effectively like an elastic band. It does nothing, right? Like I cannot do like empty spandex tubes to support this situation we've got going on here. So the Ipswich actually has actual bra straps inside the straps, right? So like true bra strapping. So like what we have here inside the straps and that gives you basically bra level support. So that's like the max that you can do, but there's all kinds of other levels, right? You can put, for instance, like firm elastic inside them. You can do empty spandex tubes if you want. Personally, doesn't work for me, but it's an option. So if you'd rather go down that route. But that's basically, you know, when we're thinking about the different levels, that's the kind of things that you can put inside a swimsuit. So if we look inside, um, and by the way, if you find that the images of the other people are over this, you can drag that box around the screen to see what we're going on. So this is the inside of one of my favorite Ipswich swimsuits. Side note, Spoonflower, their, um, I've come from what it's called, like performance athletic lycra is amazing for swimwear. And if you make the IP switch, you only need a tiny amount of it because you're only using the middle panels and the sides of contrast. So I have this like really beautiful, I love this like dusky lilac-y floral from Spoonflower. And I can't remember how much it costs, but not very much because I only had to use a tiny bit. Anyway, side point. This is what the IP switch looks like from the inside. So you can see that there's this lining um, and we actually have this like fully enclosed gusset, which is nice. Um, you can see that the edges of the legs are folded in and there's elastic under them. You can't see, but there's elastic down there. And then you can see this actual bra. So it's anchored in um, at the sides and along the arm side here, but the bottom bit of, is floating. Um, and effectively it's in like backwards, right? So the raw side's facing out um, and the finished side is facing in onto your body. You can do fun additional things. So for instance, we finish the seams of the foam with a little bit of the lycra, which just kind of looks pretty and also makes it a little bit more durable. One thing, if you have smaller boobs, you may be able to buy pre-made foam cups, but if you're a 38H, you cannot, right? Like that doesn't exist. But the good news is, is that actually sewing your own foam cups is really easy. I mean, I was actually amazed at how easy it was. And the main thing is the technique is different. So normally when you sew, right, you go right sides together and then you flip it. That's what you do. But with swim foam, you don't. You butt it next to each other like this and you do a zigzag that goes over the two. So you just put the two pieces of foam like this and the zigzag goes like this. And as a result, you get this totally flat finish. But what that means is if you then put the strips over and use it to reinforce, it just makes them a little bit stronger. But that's the approach. If we look round to the back, um, you can see the boning. So those little white bits on the sides there, that's boning. Um, and then we have various levels of like um, mesh and duoplex on the back. And basically 
they're stretchy but pretty firm and the way that we design the Ipswich is that it then has this central back closure which basically is functioning like a bra um, one of the, obviously the challenges if you want well supporting um, internal bra and you have big boobs is you can't really pull it over your head very easily right because like how would it get over my boobs? Um, so the answer to that here is that we have this closure. So you can pull it on. I won't lie, right? You have to shimmy it on a little bit, but that's the price we pay for support. And then you do it up at the back. So that's how, that's how the Ipswich works. There is um, a tutorial that Carrie put together um, for a shelf bra. So this is an image of the shelf bra that she did. And you can just go, go um, actually Carrie can probably put the link up now where you can see it, where basically you leave out the full underwire bra and instead you basically create like another layer of the mesh and you put this kind of elastic in. Um, you can use lingerie elastic for that. It may get a bit waterlogged when you wear it, but honestly it's like a small piece, so I think you'd be fine. Um, or you can, you know, use actual swim elastic. So that is the anatomy of a swimsuit. So before I go any further, Carrie, do we have any questions? Oh, hold on. I think Carrie has dropped off. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you're there. Do we have any I questions? I just don't have video. <laughs> I lost internet for a little bit, so I might have missed a couple. But uh, one question from Catherine is, would the underwire bra behave properly for like real swimming, like proper exercise swimming? I think so. I mean, I only wear underwire bras um, swimming, like underwire swimsuits, and I have never had a problem. That said, you know, I'm not like competitively swimming, um, so I don't know. I mean, you can get plastic underwires, which are a bit more flexible. Um, I think the biggest potential risk would be like, are they gonna like, thinking when you're swimming, like are they gonna cause an issue here? But I think so. I don't know, what do you think, Carrie? I think it certainly could. Um, I think, again, it depends a little bit on the sort of level of swimming you're doing, but I think it's worth trying. And uh, this kind of actually ties into Andrea's question of making a wireless bra with or without the foam cups. So if you wanted some support, like more than the shelf bra, but less than the full underwire, you could make those cups and just not put the wires in. Absolutely. Yeah, that could totally work. And you could also, instead of making the cups out of foam, you can make them out of like power mesh or something. Like mm -hmm. something that's a bit lighter. So, I mean, the joy of sewing, right? Like there's lots of levels of things that you can do. Um, and like I said, there is another option if you have slightly smaller boobs, you can buy those pre-made ones um, and you effectively put them into a shelf bra. That's kind of how they look. Um, and on the shelf bra, one thing you mentioned that the uh, the elastic at the bottom. That is on mine. I just used lingerie elastic and it's been totally fine. I wear it surfing in the ocean and everything and it's totally fine. Great. Um, and then I can see Tammy is just asking about picking the right size of underwire. So we have a guide um, on our website all about how to do that. Um, but it's a tricky one, right? Because there is so much variation in what size bra people wear and then what size they're making in cashmere. Um, and then there's also quite a lot of flexibility actually, like the same swimsuit could take different size underwires and it would be okay. Um, sometimes they would just maybe end a bit, like for instance, instead of the wire coming to here, it might come to here, but it would still fit. I will say though, one trick is that um, the company Bra Makers Supply has downloadable PDFs of wire sizes so basically it's like a piece of paper and it's like you know 41 42 43 and one thing you can do and i think it's super helpful is take a bra you wear that owns that sorry take a bra that you own that fits you well and place it on that so you need to print it off at scale right that's really important if you've made one of our pdf patterns you already know how to do that but you need to make sure you print it like at 100 percent, no shrinking or like fit and then take your bra and literally just place it on top and look and see what size underwire are you currently wearing and to be honest that is actually away from all of our guidance on the website probably the best way to do it um, as I said, bear in mind that there's a bit of wiggle room and like if normally you would have a 52, it's probably fine if you're in a 50 or a 54. One thing we did find is that it's really, really hard to find um, underwires beyond a certain size. 
um, they start getting very specialist, in which case just use the biggest one that you can find. And like I said, we're not talking about a bra that you're wearing every single day. We're talking about sort of special occasions. So I think that my personal opinion is you can be a little bit more like rough, like it more or less fits, it'll be fine if you're trying to find the bigger ones and you can't. Um, the one thing I should have mentioned already, but we actually also just extended the sizes of the Ipswich. So it now goes up to a size 32. So that's also available. And if you previously bought the Ipswich um, and you want those extra sizes, you just email us at hello at cashmeret.com. If you bought a PDF, we will have automatically sent it to you. Um, but if you didn't get that email or if you bought it from someone else or if you bought a print copy, you just email us and we email you the PDF for free. We do that on all our patterns when we expand them because only seems fair. Okay, let's move on to the next subject then, which is fabric. Now, fabric is probably, I think, the number one thing that we get questions about on swimsuits because it's not the usual fabric that most of us are sewing with and it can seem confusing and you don't want to get it wrong. So what I'm actually going to do, because I don't really have the resources right here and right now to show you all the different kinds of fabric, is I'm going to play you the section of our online workshop all about fabric. So you can learn from past me, who probably looks a little bit different, um, about fabric. And the other thing that we have is um, we have a blog post that has tons of information for you on where to source these fabrics and where to source these notions. Like I said, we have some, so go and look at ours, support small business, yay. Um, but we show you, especially, we're, we're focused mostly on like the US, UK and Australia, just because that happens to be our biggest markets. Um, but you can go there. So we will send you these slides later and you can just click this link and go there. So I am now going to get up the video and have to listen to myself, which I always don't like. Okay. All right. Over to past me. Right. So let's talk about fabric. If you've never made a swimsuit before, I can see that it can be a little bit intimidating to try and figure out, but it's actually a bit more straightforward than you might imagine. So let's start with the main fabric. So that's the outside. So what you're looking for is four way spandex. It's very stretchy. It's at least 50% stretchy, but often it's like 200% stretchy. And it's usually made from nylon, polyester, or a blend of the two. So I've got a couple of examples here. Um, so you can get lots of like beautiful solid colors, which are really nice. So I think these two are particularly fun. Um, and you can see with the stretch, that they are extremely stretchy. A lot of them, if not most, are equally stretchy in both directions, which is quite nice actually, because if you have a print, it means you can use the print whichever way you like. If it's not equally stretchy in both directions, you want to have most of the stretch around your body. So think about that when you're cutting it out. If it's not identical, if it's identical stretch, it doesn't matter. But if it's not identical, use the higher level of stretch around your body, because that's where it, the swimsuit needs to get bigger to fit on you. So you can get these kind of nice solids. Um, we also have many fun prints. Um, the one, there are a few things that you want to like bear in mind. So if you're using a print, I'd say solids, this is less of an issue. If you're using a print, a couple of things to bear in mind. One, color fastness. Now you would think that swimsuit fabric is all color fast in water. That would be a no brainer, right? Not always. Um, I have had experiences with some swimsuit where it wasn't and in water it was washing out. So it's always a good idea if you're buying online, for instance, to get a swatch and I would test that and I would put it in water and just check. The vast majority of the time it's fine, but it's always worth checking before you sew something for many hours. Another thing to bear in mind is called grin through. So if you're using a printed fabric and it's printed on a substrate that's lighter, so classically, for instance, let's say we take these polka dots, which we discovered have a bit of this, if it's a dark print on a white fabric, sometimes when it stretches, the white starts appearing in little lines. So it's not terrible, but you might be able to see in this one that if I really stretch it, it goes gray and not black. Now, to some extent, this is okay. Like if it's only stretching a little bit, you might be fine, but sometimes it's very dramatic. So you wanna check for that because you don't want something that suddenly changes color where it's pulling on you. 
The other thing is think about the pattern and whether it's going to get warped when it stretches. So again, the polka dots is a good example of this, actually. If this was very stretched on you, the polka dots actually stop being circular and they start being oval. Now, it wouldn't be stretched this much. It's probably only going to be stretched this much. So on the polka dots, it's probably okay. But on some patterns, it might start being problematic. So have a think about what you're doing um, and take that into consideration if you're picking a print. In terms of where to buy swimsuit fabric, it is increasingly becoming available for home sewists. If you're based in the US, Spandex House and Spandex World in New York have, I think, the largest selection. They have online uh, websites that you can go to and you can see, I mean, Spandex House, honestly, it's like quite entertaining, the kind of prints you can get, pretty much anything you can imagine. Um, so you can get lots and lots of fun things there. And they also have solids, which if you're color blocking or you wanna make a solid suit, you can get from there. They have a Spandex House ones, has one called Lily Skin Matte, which we've been using a lot, which is like a really great quality one. There are also other websites. Um, fabric Fairy often has swim fabric and a lot of the other big online fabric stores. So that's other ones to look at. If you're in the UK, um, Funky Fabrics, it's funky with an I, um, have a lot of swimsuit fabric. And there are other options like getting yours actually custom made. So if you look at Spoonflower, that's a custom fabric printing website and there are others in other countries. And they actually have a sports lycra that works really well for swimsuits. It's kind of expensive, but you don't need very much, especially if you're color blocking. You actually need less than one yard, even for the biggest size with spoon flower. And if you do that, you can have literally anything. You can pick from someone else's design or you can use your own. Cashmere actually has a shop on spoon flower. Some of my fabric designs are on there. You can check them out. Um, but there are lots and lots of options. So that's like really creative. It's a bit more of an investment. And then also we sell some kits. We are going to have um, blog posts that explain uh, how you can buy these fabrics and give lots of other listings. So I'd also encourage you to look at that. So that's the main fabric. So the next thing that we need is the lining inside. So this is literally just solder swimsuit lining. So you don't have to try and figure out what it is. Unlike with other clothes, you can't really just line it in the same fabric as the main. So, you know, if you're making a dress, sometimes you're like, oh, I'll just line it with the same fabric, that's fine. But swimsuit lining is a bit different. It's much thinner and it's a bit stretchier and it's made for this purpose. So it's typically 100% nylon. This is an example of beige swimsuit lining and it comes in basic colors. So this beige is really common. They do also have black. They sometimes have white. Um, I have read that if you're making a swimsuit that has large areas of white, Blue is actually like optically the best color lining to use, like light blue, but it's really hard to come by. But if you see it, cool. So this is the swimsuit lining, 100% nylon, very, very stretchy. Now, now we're gonna get to the bits that might seem a bit more intimidating, which is if you're making the bra, what are you going to use? So at the sides of the bra, you need to use power net. And this is the sides and also through the back. So this is the piece that's equivalent to the band on your bra. Power net is a really strong, but also flexible fabric. And this is what it looks like. So it comes in different colors. Um, we have a beige one here and a black and a white. It's usually four way stretch, but sometimes it has very minimal in the length, but it has more horizontally. And what happens is when it gets stretched, it almost looks like a mesh, like you can see through it. So it's not a solid. So it's called power net. It's sometimes called power mesh. Um, and this is really important. You wanna get a high quality one because this is giving you a lot of the support. So we have a beige one, we have a black one, we have a white one. And really, I mean, it's up to you. It shouldn't, none of this should be showing through. But I would say, for instance, if you're making a suit that has a black background, well, why not use the black inside so that if it does stretch, there's a tiny bit of grin through, well, at least you have black behind it, which is nice. So this is power net. And you only need a really small amount of it. All of the bra making fabrics, they're quite expensive, but you can, you only need like a really small amount. So it's not too bad in the big scheme of things. So the central piece of the bra, which is the central frame, which is here, also called the bridge, 
you actually need a firm knot stretch. So the sides and the back are stretched, but this piece is not stretched. So there's two options really. The one is to use this, which is called duoplex. So this is a classic bra making uh, fabric. It doesn't stretch at all. It's firm and it's just like a good weight. So it's called duoplex. You also have another option, which is to use like bra lining like this. This is also not, it's like a tiny bit of mechanical stretch, but basically it's not stretch. You will find usually that you can get like rainbow colors of duoplex. There's a lot available, but if you want something that's a bit sheerer and a bit more sort of feminine, I guess, this kind of lining is nice. It's slightly harder to sew with. So if you're trying to like minimize like how challenging it is to sew, I would go with duoplex, but bra lining is also an option. And then finally, in terms of fabric for the cups, you're going to need foam. Now, if you have a small bus, you can actually buy pre-made foam cups, but forget about it if you're a 38H. So we're gonna be making our own, and actually it's extremely easy. So it's actually better because you can make them a bit more shaped. So this is the foam. It's sold usually as swimsuit foam, but you can also use bra foam. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't retain water. Um, so basically it's sandwiched. There's a little bit of fabric on the front and back usually, and then there's usually a neutral color foam in the middle. And it doesn't stretch in the length on the grain, but it does stretch a little bit width way. So that's what you want. You don't want your bra, if you think about it, you don't want your bra to stretch this way because everything's gonna go south, but you're okay with it stretching around you a little bit because it's gonna like fit onto you well. So the most common bra foam, I've had, I'm actually not sure I've really seen it apart from in beige and white and black for swimsuit foam specifically. But if you look at bra foam, it's often available in like many other colors because basically they're covering it in different color fabrics. This is very expensive usually, but you only need a really small amount. So I would either, you know, buy a kit or I would see what supplier you can find that will sell it in like the smallest quantities. And people will often sell it for like eighth of a yard, quarter of a yard. You only need a little bit. And then you can be conservative when you're cutting out because you can make another swimsuit later. So these bra making fabrics are definitely a bit harder to source. My favorite place, and I buy almost everything from there, is Bra Makers Supply, which is a Canadian company, but they sell to the US, and generally I found it very efficient to buy things from them. I haven't had big bills, and they really have like almost everything. There are also other suppliers in the US. For instance, like So Sassy is a website that provides a lot of this. Um, Taylor Made Shop also often has some of this available. Um, there's one called Sweet Cups. And again, go to our website and search bra making suppliers, and we will have a big list of where you can find these kind of things in different countries. So that's the fabric. Now let's look at the notions that you. Okay. Thank you, past Jenny. Looking a little bit less warm. Um, so yeah, that was the fabric. So I'm just having a look to see if anyone had questions about fabric. I do not think so. So we shall move on to the next topic. And the next topic is support options. So um, I already talked about this a little bit, but I wanted to think like more broadly about support that you have in your swimsuit. So the first thing is that if you want and to have more support in terms of like the body, you can use a power mesh for the lining. So basically what this means is the lining that I was showing you before in the video is super, super stretchy, right? So like its function is more like keeping the swimsuit together and making it not sheer. But if you want to have a swimsuit that's more like hold you in, you can. Um, and the way you do that is by using power mesh as the lining. So you do need to be careful with this, okay? You do not want a swimsuit that's like horribly compressing and you feel like you're wearing Spanx. However, you can use it either totally to line or just in a panel. So for instance, if you want, you can just do like the bottom half, like where your tummy is in a power mesh. And look, it, it's not gonna like suddenly make you look like you lost 50 pounds, but what it is gonna do is smooth things out a little bit and like feel like you're being held in place. So if that's something you want, 
then that's definitely an option. Um, most, I think, I haven't done it myself, so warning, it's not a thing I do in my swimsuits, but my understanding is usually people will cut it a tiny bit smaller to basically give you the support that they want. So just like at the sides, you would just trim a little bit off so that it's actually like stretching when it's, when it's on you and holding you in. So that's one option when we think about support. The next thing obviously is talking about swim bras, which I guess I talked about already, but all the different levels. And the other thing is straps, which I also talked about. So, you know, you can go from super stretchy down to not really stretchy at all. Um, and I actually think straps is probably one of the most important parts. Um, I think it seems like, oh, you know, straps just hold the suit in place, but actually they do so much bus support that I would really think carefully about what you want to do in your straps and what, what approach you're going to take. In terms of sewing, so this is another thing where it's easier than you think in some ways, but there are sort of techniques that help. So the first thing is that a regular machine is totally fine. So this is the kind of um, project where I think a lot of people think, well, you need a serger. You don't. In fact, I wouldn't recommend only constructing a swimsuit on a serger because a, a, a good zigzag stitch and in the instructions and in the um, online workshop, I take you through like what kind of zigzag you should do. A good zigzag stitch is actually a lot stronger um, than, than a serger, uh, especially a three thread serger, but probably even a four thread serger. So if you are gonna use a serger or overlocker in the UK, you would zigzag first and then serge the edges. That I think is like the best and most professional approach that you can have. Um, but don't worry if you don't have a serger, swimsuit fabric doesn't fray. And because we're lining it, it also doesn't matter, right? Because the, the, loose, the um, raw edges will never be touching your skin because it's all lined. So do not worry if you do not have a serger. Um, you do need to make sure that you're using a decent stitch. So like I said, you want to follow the instructions that I give in the booklet, um, but also you want to um, experiment a little bit. So in the class, you may have seen at the bottom of the screen when I was talking about fabric, I had like stitch examples. So you want to do that yourself on some scraps of fabric first. The key thing, the key thing is that it's strong, but it doesn't snap when you stretch it. Okay, because these seams are coming under a lot of pressure, probably more pressure than anything else you've ever sewn, right? Because the negative ease and the stretch means it's, you know, it's trying to escape. So you need to make sure that it's going really strongly attached, um, but also that when pressure comes in, it doesn't suddenly snap. That's why we do a zigzag stitch. You can't do a straight stitch. It would snap in a second. Um, so you want to do some testing first on pieces of swimsuit fabric that you have. Inserting the elastic around the legs is one of the trickier things to do. And in the Ipswich, we also have a little cutout at the back and that has elastic around too. So it basically is a technique, right? Like you have to learn how to slightly stretch fabric, sorry, slightly stretch elastic as you're sewing. And effectively, again, the class honestly is the best thing here because you can observe me doing it. But really what you're having to do is move it through. If you just pull elastic as it's going through, it's very easy to break a needle because you're basically pulling on the needle. So what you have to do is hold both sides and sew like this, right? With a hand behind and ahead of the needle, which normally we would never do, right? Normally it's like, keep your hands here, keep your hands here. But with sewing elastic, you often need to do that. And you also need to learn, and this is a bit of a hard one because it's kind of a tactile thing, how much to stretch it. So really it's just a little bit because we want it to like cling around our legs and not um, expand out. But there's a bit of a learning curve on that. One thing that can happen very easily is that the elastic and everything starts waving like this. Okay, that happens like very, very easily. So the first thing I'd say is try it on because maybe when you try it on, the waving goes away and who cares what a swimsuit looks like when it's in your cupboard, right? Nobody, not me. As long as it looks okay when, you're on, when it's on, that's fine. However, maybe it doesn't look okay when it's on and maybe it's still waving. So that typically, the issue that's happened there 
is that the material, the fabric is stretching, not just the elastic. So what you really need is the fabric to stay loose or not loose, like not stretched and the elastic to stretch and you're trying to put them together. But if the fabric stretches as well, it waves. One technique recently I learned, and oh my goodness, it works so well if you have this issue, is to put tissue paper against the feed dogs. So when I say tissue paper, I mean the kind of thing that paper patterns are made out of. So you could, you know, trim the edge off a paper pattern where there is no, where there is no pattern piece, or you can just use like regular paper, right? Like regular thin paper. And what you do is you place it down first, then you place your fabric, then you place your elastic. You sew it, so you're sewing through paper. And what happens is the reason that these things get like pulled out and wavy is because the feed dogs are pulling the fabric through underneath. And sometimes effectively, like they do it too aggressively and they start stretching the fabric out. And if you put some tissue paper on, that it just does it evenly because it's pulling against the paper as if it was woven fabric. So I only learned that one recently, but wow, it has helped. Like it's also amazing if you are, uh, for instance, you're making the Alcott dress with the like neckline that has some elastic in it and you're finding it's waving, use some elastic because that's what happened to me. Sorry, use some tissue paper, it makes a big difference. And then the other thing is having a walking foot or if you have a faff machine, it's their IDT. So a walking foot basically tries to address that issue of the feed dogs pulling on the bottom and the presser foot not pulling, right? Because that's the issue you have, the differential. This one's being pulled aggressively and this one isn't. It's just having to follow. But with a walking foot, it basically pulls the fabric like this. Which Jenny, do you want to stop sharing your screen so that we can see you better? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is my, my things, right? So a regular sewing machine, the feed dog is pulling the fabric through like this and the presser foot is just there, right? So if you have two pieces of fabric, the bottom one is being aggressively pulled through and the top one is just having to slide through. And what that means is that depending on like the kind of tackiness of the fabrics, it can, it can pull them apart. And that's, you know, classic, like, I mean, quilters do this a lot. Quilters have this issue, right? Like you can start with the fabric being even. And by the time you've got to the end, they're like this. And you're like, how did that happen? And the answer is they've been pulled through at different rates. So a walking foot does this. It pulls the fabric through like this. It basically replicates the feed dogs on the top as well. And when you really think about it, sewing machines should all be like that, right? Like it seems really like a sort of like issue with basic sewing machines that they don't do this. Like that seems more functional. Um, so that's what a walking foot does. Um, you can buy them. They're quite expensive in some cases, like the Benina one is like $150 or something, but you can buy like cheaper ones. And then if you have a faff machine, it actually has like a built-in walking foot called IDT. You have to engage it, but then it does that. Um, I actually recently just got a faff machine. So I'm going to be talking all about it um, on my social media. But um, so I need to like, I don't really understand how it works yet. Like I'm intrigued to kind of understand like what's the mechanism by which the walking foot works on faff. Um, but if you have them, you don't need to use one. So using, having a walking foot is definitely like, a really big help if you're making a swimsuit, like a really big help. Can you do it without it? Yes, and definitely use that tissue paper trick. But if you want to buy one thing that's going to make your knits and your walking foots much better, it would be that. Um, and walking feet are, better, are great for lots of things. The only thing I'll say is when I first discovered them, I was like, woohoo, I'll just keep my walking foot on all the time. They're a bit, they're loud, right? They kind of go like clunk, 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 which is annoying. But also um, the fabric is less firmly in place. So with a traditional presser foot, it's kind of like pressing it and keeping it there. With a walking foot, it's very easy to like move the fabric or like not go in a straight line because it's not anchored as much. So if you're just sewing like regular straight seams on a woven, it's easier to use a regular foot. Um, but knits, elastic, things like that. And I just noticed Lisa mentioned it's great trying to keep plaids match. Absolutely. So anything where like, you imagine you would need loads of pins, like walking feet helps with that. Um, I'm just having a look. Tracy is asking if a walking foot can walk with a vintage sewing machine. I actually do not know that. I'm not sure. Maybe there are specialist walking feet for, for vintage machines. It's entirely possible. Um, and then Holly is saying she has a knit foot that works better for her. I have never heard of a knit foot. So that's interesting, something to look into. Um, she's saying the walking feet she had were plastic, the knit foot is metal. Okay, so it probably depends. My walking foot on my Benina is 
metal um, and it works quite well, but all kinds of different options. Um, but I would definitely say, you know, like if you're trying to like take your sewing up to the next level, investing in a walking foot, totally worth it. Okay. So those are my sewing tips. So then let's talk about fitting tips. So the good news is that negative ease is your friend here. So the likelihood that a swimsuit is going to fit you is much higher than almost anything else because it stretches, right? And so if it turns out you were like 5% off, doesn't matter. The fabric can stretch 5%. It's not a big issue. So, you know, obviously, you know, use your body measurements to pick, use the body measurement table to pick what you're going to do. And you can grade between sizes. And if you go to cashmerette.com forward slash grading, you can find our grading guides to like every single um, pattern we have, including the Ipswich. So grade between sizes if you need to, but you don't have to worry too much about like sort of your circumference. The biggest issue is your length. Okay, so this is the case with anything that um, sort of comes under your crotch. So like bodysuits have the same issue, jumpsuits, right? Your torso length is going to affect the fit. So this is something where, again, people are quite interesting, actually. They're like, well, I'm five foot one, so I have to shorten it. Or I'm six foot seven, so I have to lengthen it. Not necessarily. The question is on your proportions. Because if a five foot six body is this, right? You might be six foot and just have really long legs and your body's exactly the same length. Or maybe you're six foot tall and you have average lengths, but your body's really long. And it's the same, like if this is a five foot six torso, maybe you have little legs and you're five foot two, or maybe you have a much smaller torso and longer legs. So it's really about your proportion, not your height. The good news is you can easily add to the torso length or shorten the torso length because we have lengthen and shorten lines. I don't know that there's a super easy way to like gauge it in advance um, because of the stretch factor. And again, the stretch is your friend, like, you know, it's gonna give you a little bit of um, wiggle room there, um, but you can lengthen them. The other thing is the, the Ipswich is actually also in, comes in like a bikini format, but it's, it's like one of those bikinis where it's the tiniest bit of tummy, right? Like you're not showing very much. Um, and what I have found, like we had one tester, I remember now, who made it, it was too short for her. So she just cut it in half and wore it as a bikini and actually worked really well for her. And then she knew how much to add. Um, the other thing that's very easy to change is the leg um, opening, right? So it was kind of funny actually when we were developing this because we realized really quickly that like people's opinions on what a high cut leg is are like wildly variable, right? So I thought, oh, this is a really modest leg opening. And then some people were like, oh, legs. Um, whereas I was thinking, oh, compared to what I see, you know, on the Kardashians, it's nothing. Um, but the good news is it's very, very easy to change it, right? This is like necklines. You know, people freak out like the necklines too low. I'm like, or a higher neckline. It's the same thing with leg openings, right? If you don't like this, draw on this. It's really as simple as that, right? Just draw a different line. Um, and because of the way it's constructed, like you're not going to really come into problems with that. Um, if you want to like really change it, for instance, like making it into like more like shorts, that's a more dramatic change. But actually, um, Ayala has a post coming up on the blog tomorrow all about how you can change our Belmont leggings and make them into swim shorts. So if you wanted to make the top of the Ipswich and the bottom into shorts, you could do that. The other thing that we have um, a free downloadable piece for is making it into a tankini with basically a peplum skirt. So you make them as two separate pieces in the peplum skirt, which is another great option actually, if you think that like it's possible your torso is way too long and you're just not sure and you wanna test it make the tankini version because you'll be totally flexible on that. So let me go back. Yeah. So those are the main fitting tips. Like don't worry too much about circumference. Um, length is more of an issue. I can hear my child crying in the background, but hopefully she's okay. She's being looked after. Um, and yes, and then you can change the leg opening. So that was what I wanted to cover today. I wanted to, mention again that if you like this you can get the whole swimsuit making for curves online workshop with code swim 20 um and also Jenny, I have, yep the code is actually swim week for oh, the that's unfortunate swimsuit making for curves 
It's swim week, is it? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm going to like change that like right now. Um, so, oh, no, it didn't work. Okay, never mind. Swim week. Apologies to everybody. We will clarify that when we email out. Um, and one of the things I do in that also, I don't know if you saw, but in that black polka dot version, um, it actually had like um, piping in the seams, which is really cool. So I show you how to do that. It's flat piping um, and it's kind of like a nice little added thing. So are there any other questions that I missed, Carrie? Nope. Great. All right. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Um, it's a weird year to be making swimsuits. Like, well, are you going outside? Well, we not. Maybe, maybe some of you have a private pool, in which case I'm very jealous. Um, but it's certainly, you know, it's, it's very satisfying when you can make one. Um, and there's just loads and loads and loads of different possibilities, especially with the color blocking that we have on the Ipswich. Obviously, there are many other swimsuit patterns as well, but for ours, um, it has those potential. So anyway, thank you everyone for joining and um, we'll speak to you next week. Bye.